Can a man of humble birth hope for love from a high-born beauty? Well, you have never experienced ecstasy. Pleasure. Well, pleasure is not enough. Pleasure is hell. I recognize you now. Yes, because of my famous diamonds. <laughs> no, because of your famous breasts. I heard them say that they wanted to get soldiers to put hot pokers in your eyes to blind you. Oh. So I rushed on ahead to get the money before it was too late. Uh, and to warn you, of course, to escape. I met my coachman, Morris, in prison. And he is ready 24 hours a day to help me flee. I will have a late supper packed in a basket. And I will take my telescope. Keep the money that you owe the Queen for ourselves. Oh. We will be banished. Never permitted to return to Paris. Fly before the horses are frightened by those blasted fireworks. Now go, or it is a cold dungeon for us tonight. Go! Go! Do you think that ideas arise out of emotions or that emotions arise out of ideas? Oh, hush. I am thinking of hurling myself out of this door. Well, leave your diamonds behind, because your body will be covered in mud and blood. I have been jumping from various heights all my life, and I always land on my feet. No! <laughs> am I dead? Let us spread out fur rugs and pillows, and we will wait up there. Inflammation of the lungs. Scurvy. Rheumatism, strangulary, oh. deafness, oh. indigestion, oh dropsy, <laughs> falling hair, loss of voice, <laughs> neuritis, blindness, and paralysis. Oh. <laughs> I have but a moment to live. No. Yes, but your peace, I warn you, will be shattered by having my presence close by. We will need a new library. Because we will be commingling our books. A secret tunnel between your bedroom and mine. Mm -hmm. So that we can read the Bible every night. We could start with Genesis. <laughs> what bliss. <laughs> Welcome to my husband's chateau, my laboratory. This is my weighing box. But it is so big, and it is ugly. What is it doing in your entrance hallway? I want to make love to you. Again and again. Right here. Right now. On this globe. I love curves. I want to describe to you an experiment. But wouldn't you rather be a great navigator and sail all over the globe with me? No. But love, it's the stuff of imagination. You are a mischievous monkey with a throbbing red member tearing at your breeches. And I am in a fever of lust, and I must take to my bed. Won't you join me there? Your insatiable desire is, is not flattering to me. Men have trouble listening. I am listening. I am besotted by you and your brain. What a delight if you really have one. I really have one. I challenge you to discover it. I measured the air. The oxygen had lost weight by the exact same amount that had increased the weight of the metal. And your conclusion? Nothing disappears. And so the energy that you invest on the page will never be lost. You are immortal. I want you. And so do the bloodthirsty forces of repression who want to torture me. Oh. Now 
go. Save yourself. He finds the woman of his dreams. And then he must lose her. The meteor shower. Then we shall die looking at the star. Will you please go and write in your bar and leave my bed? I need the warm scent of your bedclothes. I am to present a report of an experiment at the Café Gardot. Scientists do gather there, yes. And since women are not permitted in coffee shops, you will fool no one. I will pretend to be you. <laughs> <laughs> that he would die without ever having heard her sweet voice say to him, I love you. I bought this pamphlet from Paris. Our enemies are trying to discredit our ideas. I am now coupled publicly with my low-born lover by the anti-intellectual crowd who are circulating this libelous pamphlet which shows us in an erotic illustration. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, my. Mercy, conservatives are so dirty-minded. We are not named, of course, but I am bending backwards over a globe of the world, and there are books scattered about. There must be a spy in the house. The cap caption under the cartoon reads that two intellectuals are practicing adulterous free love, and that depravity of the body leads to depravity of the mind. Luckily, my dress is covering my face. <laughs> I am supreme in matters of creativity. But oh, she has such a mastery of numbers. Are you going to look into my mirror all day while I go labor in the fields? Go back to your own room. Men are so vain. <laughs> you were closeted up there for hours with that Italian mathematician. Yes. I needed verification of my equations. He can't even act. But well, that was no reason to send him away. He's been here for three months. There's altogether too much science going on around him. <laughs> on the contrary, there is altogether too much theatre going on around here. He who condemns the theatre is an enemy to his country. I want to translate Newton for my son, Louis. Permit me to transport you over our enchanted lake. She was much younger than he, and he could no longer satisfy her. His body could not produce fire. Once upon a time, he was volcanic. And his body would tremble with the frightening roar of coming desire so terrible that all the barnyard animals would run away and hide in expectation of a giant cataclysm. I find that I love you. One of my young military friends has made me pregnant. Spare. That is unfair. You cannot sustain, my dear. <laughs> Women, by their very nature, create in short spurts little orgasmic pops, oh. while men, through time, are known for their epic longevity. We are big. Oh. You are neither big nor fertile. I have an immense body of work. Yes. And if only the world knew how much of that body was given birth by me. I wrote to my husband to come. You see, this is the sort of thing that a man of your class could never understand. I wrote to him to come because it is the proper thing to do when one does not expect to live. I sought knowledge. I did not seek love. But curiously, I found it. 
Monsieur Voltaire said that knowledge is a kiss from God. Monsieur Voltaire kissed me and bestowed upon me his divine knowledge with a smile. I received word today that I have been elected to the Academy of the Arts. You are immortal. Emily gave birth to a little daughter. They both died of childbed fever. I almost did not survive this loss, but made certain that her writings found their way into print. Her books are in my library. A remarkable translation of the work of Sir Isaac Newton is read by all the young men in all the schools of France and will be for centuries to come. It was New Year's Eve in Paris, the night that she changed his miserable life. Our stupid, though handsome, hero had been invited to view the royal fireworks from the terrace of a treacherous aristocrat. He was standing behind a beautiful woman seated at a gaming table.